We all need a bank account. It is the central hub of our finances, but traditional banks have been increasingly poor at offering the simple things we need from our bank accounts. They have cumbersome and slow online applications, making managing your finances that bit harder, along with layers of hidden fees, countless numbers of accounts, making it confusing for the everyday consumer. So that's why I switched to one of these new challenger banks. And over the last six months, I've been using Starling Bank. I have to say I have been very pleased with the overall experience so far. It's not perfect but it is not far off and it is certainly an upgrade from my old bank which was TSB. So today I'm going to give you an in-depth review of what it's like being a Starling customer in 2021, sharing some of my experiences on what their offerings are like, the app features, other perks, fees and what having a bank solely on your phone is really like. So let's get into it. And the first thing to say here is that by now you should know that Starling is a fully regulated UK bank, meaning that your money is protected by the FSCA up to £85,000. So they only have five or six different types of account, which makes life easier and simple and they're all free. So the personal account is the standard current account, which is one of the two that I have. It's free and you do earn a very small amount of interest on your balance, which isn't available everywhere. But I also might be able to get a slightly higher interest rate elsewhere on my current account balance. But everywhere is next to nothing at the moment. So I really would be talking maybe 10 or 20 pound over the course of the year if there's a few thousand pounds in that account. So we're really splitting hairs. And the purpose of my current account is to have good features and for it to be easy to use. I'm not mo not so bothered about chasing a good rate of return on my money in my current account. That's not what it's for. And I'll do that elsewhere. So then there is also a joint account, which is essentially the same as the personal account, but built for couples and friends who are living together so you can pay bills and manage your household money more easily, which is handy. But to have one of those joint accounts, you also have to have a personal account as well before opening the joint one. So thirdly, there is a euro account, which I won't go into detail on, but it is good for those with euro denominated income. So you can save on the foreign exchange fees and hold euros in a separate separate bank account. So then there is also a teen account, which is again, essentially almost exactly the same as the personal account with just a few less features not available to under 18s. So like the overdraft, for example. And then there is also a business account, which you can set up if you're self-employed or have an LTD. And I have to declare my self-employment earnings. So this is a really great option for me. And one of the only free business bank accounts. Most of the other banks charge a minimum of three or four pounds per month. So you can pay for their business toolkit, which is essentially a QuickBooks alternative to help with invoicing and tax uh, declarations, but not something that I need. So I can't review that at the moment. So something to note about Starling is that they do not have any savings accounts. So there's no cash ISAs, no stocks and shares ISAs or anything like that, which is completely fine with me because all I want from my current account is for their features to work well. I can save my money and get a good rate of return on my money elsewhere. So just for my current account balance and a few emergency pounds, then that's fine getting that small rate of return in Starling. So now I want to talk about the main selling point of Starling, and that is the app and the features you can do within that application and why I've enjoyed using Starling because of this. So there are just so many things you can do within the app. So when you open up, you'll see this home screen, which gives you spending insights, but you can also see all your standing orders and subscriptions in one place making it easier to cut expenses and know what is coming out and when. And likewise with spending insights, all the transactions are automatically separated into categories. So you can see where you might be overspending and it gives you this breakdown on the home screen, which could be better, it's not completely clear, but you can also see the breakdown by merchant and you can identify not only what you're spending on, but who you're spending it with. And like I said, I think the spending insights could be slightly improved on the home screen. And because I do the majority of my spending on a cashback credit card, it kind of makes this feature a bit redundant because I don't actually get an accurate insight on where my money is going, but that's the trade-off that I have with getting cashback on my purchases. So there's this spaces feature, which allows you to save money within the app, 
in a separate location away from your main balance and you can easily put money aside for a particular reason or just an emergency and they also have this round up feature which rounds up all your transactions and puts that loose change aside into these saving pots or you can put aside a set amount at set time intervals at the start of each month for example and these aren't separate accounts it's all the same account it just moves that money away from your main balance so you aren't able to spend it unless you put that money back into your main plot. So they also have this marketplace feature and it's not something I've used personally. I couldn't find too much information about it, but it's meant to allow for easy integration of 30 party apps into Starling. And one of the great things about Starling is the control you have. So the security features allow you to have close contact with your account all the time, allowing you to pick up on any irregularities and simply make changes at the touch of a button. And this includes activating or deactivating different payment methods such as contactless chip and pin ATM withdrawals or online payments and you also have a 3d online payment so that's where you go onto your phone and make sure that the payment you're making online is you and you will also get notifications of all these things also as with Monzo you pay no extra fees on top of any um, holiday spending so they offer the Mastercard exchange rate if you pay in the local currency abroad which isn't bad so that's definitely a bonus for when people are allowed to go abroad International payments will incur a 0.4% fee, so you can't send other currencies to people for free. And in terms of other fees, there really aren't much at all. So all accounts are completely free. And aside from international payments, the only other thing you might be paying for is the overdraft feature. The overdraft facility is fairly lackluster. You'll get a maximum of £500 if you're eligible, which is a lot less than some other banks, and there is a charge on your overdraft as well. But hopefully most people won't be needing an overdraft if you're managing your finances responsibly. And the interest fees on the overdraft come in at 15%, and it's calculated on a monthly basis. So this is perhaps cheaper than some other banks, but it's again not a cheap credit option and should be avoided in my opinion. So you also have a virtual card, so if you don't have your physical card with you, you can see all your details and spend online. So if you've hooked it up to Apple Pay or Google, you almost don't need the physical card because you've got everything there on the app. So as we know, Starling is solely an online and predominantly mobile based bank, meaning that they have no physical stores and even the desk top site is quite limited with its functionality but they are adding more and more features all the time to their online bank. So people are visiting physical banks less and less and the only reason I would personally visit a physical store now is to either deposit cash or checks and both of which you can do extremely easy with Starling. So for cash deposits you simply visit your local post office and they'll be able to instantly deposit the funds into your account and for me personally my nearest post office is far closer than any other bank making that process a lot more efficient and you can deposit up to £20,000 each tax year and I'm sure for most people and the tax abiding citizens out there that is plenty. And likewise with checks, which I've only done once or twice, which was some birthday money, it was very easy. You don't even need to leave your home. You simply take a few photos of the check if it's under £500. And they said it will clear within three working days, but for me, it's been the next working day and I've got that money. So if the check is over £500, you can post it to them for free, but obviously that process takes slightly longer. But if you were to lose your mobile phone, you could obviously run into a few problems with Starling, which is why I have kept an old high street bank just as a backup and in case of emergencies, if I do have any issues with it being able to access my money. So they do have an online banking option, as I said, which they do keep adding more and more features to to reduce the reliance on the mobile app. But in order to get into the online bank, you have to log in through the app, which doesn't get over the problems if you lose your phone. So if that does happen, it is going to be a bit of a ball ache until you get a new phone. And that is the trade-off you have with having a mobile bank. And of course, Starling is not perfect. The app can be a bit complex to start off with. There's a lot going on and it takes getting a bit of used to where everything is. But I have found the whole experience quite easy and there hasn't been any times where the services have been offline and everything has worked as it should. And coupled up with the great control over your spending, all I can ask for from a bank at the moment is what I'm getting from Starling. So thank you for watching and see you next time.